Good morning and welcome to our service today. Great to be with you wherever you are, whoever you're with, as we join together today. This morning, as usual, we're going to be joining in worship um, and we're going to do this through having some songs where the words will be on screen for you to sing along with at home or just listen to and reflect uh, on God. We're also going to hear from different families, uh, different households spread around the village and what's going on uh, with them and in their life. And we're also going to hear today as our talk this morning from uh, Elna, who represents Turkic Belt Ministries, one of our partners in mission. As we begin this morning, let me start with a section from a psalm. This is Psalm 108. It says, My heart is steadfast, O God. I will sing and make music with all my soul. So awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I will sing to you among all the peoples. For great is your love and higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. So be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Save us and help us with your right hand, that those you love may be delivered. So, Lord, as we gather in today, Lord, we pray as we bring our praise and worship to you that it would be a pleasing sound to your ear, Lord. Lord, as we hear about different people, we remember our own situation, the situations of our friends and our neighbours. Lord, we pray into every household this morning that you would, um, people would know your presence with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's start by singing a song to declare, a song that we sang last week, that God, we want your kingdom here with us and around us. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. Because we are your church and we need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger and we first. Refuse to waste our life. For your joy and prize. To see the captive heart release. The hurt, the sick, the poor at peace. Cause we are your church, and we 
As we've done in previous weeks, it is so good to hear from different people um, what's going on in their situations at the moment, um, what's changed for them, what, what challenges they face as well, so we can pray into them. So let's hear from a couple more people at this time. Well, hello, let me introduce you. This is the race family, isn't it? Yeah. And we've got, we've got Olivia, we've got Amelia. Amelia, are you going to wave? Gareth. And we've got Leone, and um, you're a, a really important part of Messy Church, of Little Buds, Who Let the Dads Out, and our special services and all that. So we've really been missing you. So can I ask, what's lockdown been like for the race family? Has it been hard? Have you been enjoying it? Ups and downs. Ups and downs. Ups and downs, yeah. You're enjoying the Easter holidays, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. And so, I'm enjoying not homeschooling. Yeah. What should, tell me, what's your mum like as a homeschool teacher? She's brilliant. Oh, not very good. Oh, dear. Oh, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? That is, I think she'd be pretty good. And what's your dad like? Does, does your dad do any homeschooling? No. Dads aren't very good at it, let me tell you. Let me tell you. So um, you, we're now in week four of lockdown, and I think you've done something very special today, haven't you? What have you done? What have you done today? Check Graham. What have you done? Dyed our hair. Dyed your hair pink. So are you going to wave your hair so we can all see your pink hair? That's lovely. And Gareth, your pink hair, mate? No, I went out. Oh, shocking. Boo. 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 <laughs> so... Um, let me ask, how's your mum? Because we've, um, you know, before the lockdown, we knew your mum wasn't feeling very well. So how, how's your mum coping, Leone? Better. She is, yeah. She's doing really well. She's um, she's post-surgery now. She did a 10K run today. We speak to her regularly on the phone. Uh. Um, and she starts her radiotherapy, three weeks of radiotherapy next Thursday. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, she's a, she's a trooper. It's tough not being able to... See her and help with the recovery. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. But um, we're in we're in contact regularly. Yeah. Good. Uh, good. And and Gareth, how's working from home working out for you? Oh, good. Okay, actually. Um, I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's difficult balancing conference calls and video calls and supporting them with the schooling and yeah, you know, trying to get out for walks and things with the kids. But but it's you know actually. We know we're spending a bit more time together as a family, I'd say. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, it's, it swings and roundabouts, really. Yeah, I think people are discovering new ways of being, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, we've been, it's been great that you've been part of Circle Time Girls, and we're going to be starting that again on Monday, so hopefully you'll be tuning in on Monday. Um, I think you'll be missing Sparks. Are you missing Sparks? Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? But it's all going to, it'll all start up again. So, um, now, before I go off, is there anything I can pray for you before we uh, say goodbye? Well, our thoughts and prayers are with all the NHS staff and yeah. all the frontline key workers who are helping keeping us going during this uh, very difficult time. Um, and we also have two family members, one young and one old, yeah. um, in care homes at the moment, which is particularly worrying. Yeah. Um, um, so our, um, our thoughts and prayers are with them as well. Right. Well, is it okay if I pray for you now before we say goodbye? Yes. Can we do that? Let's pray. That's the Heavenly Father, we, we just pray for all the race family. We thank you for them. We thank you that they are a precious part of our church community. And we pray for your blessing and protection over them. And we pray for the wider family, particularly for Leonie's mum, who um, is, um, she's, beginning her treatment soon and we pray for your protection and healing over her and we also pray for your protection lord over the uh, members of the family who are in the care homes may they um, 
be kept safe and may they have the very best of care. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. It's been lovely to talk to you. I can't wait to see you when this is all over uh, and this back to normal. And what, yeah. sorry? The Skype button. This, it's not a Skype button, we're FaceTiming. FaceTiming, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's we say goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Well, it was great to hear about the family there. And uh, we've also been speaking to one of our members, Jenny, and Linda has been talking to her about what's happening in this time. Hi, Jenny. How Hi. are you? <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Yeah. Struggling on, yeah. getting well, there. We've had four weeks of lockdown now, so how have you been coping? Um, oh, well, I've managed managed really well. I've got all, some routine and I'm sort of keeping keeping things going, keeping yeah. positive. Yeah. So it's well, okay. You've, you've got the animals, haven't you? So that helps you. Got I've, yeah, I think because I'm on my own, you know, I know you are, but I'm on my own and, and having the dogs, it's yeah. this company and it also gives me some routine because I've got to take them out and stuff. Yeah, and has that changed over the time? Because from the beginning of lockdown till now, things yeah. sort of changed a bit, didn't they? Well, yeah, because I'm used to driving to the Outwoods or Bradgate or somewhere, road yeah. anywhere. And now I've discovered all these places I, I knew existed, but I've never been to round about, and it's brilliant. Oh, that's great! Um, yeah, some, you know, out, all around the village, there's some yeah. good walks, isn't there? So it's, yeah, that's... all on the outskirts, over the fields. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, as long as you're careful, it's it, it's lovely. Yeah. That's great. So how have you been able to connect in with church over this time? Well, I'm following the services. Yeah. And I'm always joining on a Sunday with the services and we've got a growth group still going. So I still feel connected as far as that's concerned. It's, it's really nice to have that connection. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. I know most of us haven't heard of Zoom before now, have no. we? No. <laughs> We're all, it's We're all a learning curve, <laughs> isn't it? So, um, so yeah. So, what are you finding most difficult uh, in this lockdown? What what what's the most difficult thing? I think the most difficult thing is is probably like everyone else, not seeing you know face to face with family and friends and yeah, and especially yeah. my mom because she's in a care home and. You know, I, I I can't see her. She's in her nineties, and you know, yeah. at first, but now I'm thinking, oh, I can't see me. You know, no, it's um, a long. Do you ring her? Oh yeah, we talk on the phone, and I take things and hand them in and whatnot. But it's, right, it's just it's, not the same. It's not the same, of course not. No. Can you actually go to a window and speak to her or not? No. Um, I could. Well, not really, because she's not really near a window funnily enough she's not really bothered because i did suggest it and she <laughs> seemed to be bothered so she obviously right. doesn't want to see you <laughs> no she's all <laughs> happy to talk to me isn't she? Um, oh dear no it is it's hard to not see our families isn't it yeah and but. not go out you know i'm used to popping out and doing things and it's just a question of getting used to doing things differently isn't it i suppose yeah yeah, it is. Yeah. So what could we pray for as church for you today? Well, just really to keep friends and family safe, pray for my mum because I don't know what the PPE is like there. But, yeah. you know, I just, just because of her age and stuff, and just, right. just pray that she that she's looked after and pray for the people looking after her, really, mostly. Okay, so let's just pray now then. Okay. So Father God, I thank you for Jenny and thank you that uh, she's keeping positive and keeping in touch. But we do pray for Jenny's family and friends, Lord, that you keep them safe and keep them well. But especially we pray for Jenny's mom in the care home. Lord, that you'd keep her safe. We pray for those who work in the care home too, that they'd have enough uh, PPE that they'd be keep safe too 
So Lord, we pray for your covering over Jenny, her family and her friends this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, it's so great there to hear about uh, what's going on in, in different people's lives, uh, the challenges they're facing at the moment, the good things that are coming out of this time and lots that we can pray into there. We're going to sing a song now, leading on from Easter last week, reminding us that that same power that lifted Jesus from the grave is within us, each of us uh, with the Holy Spirit in us, with Jesus by our side. We see his power all around us, working in our day-to-day -day life, just as we've heard there. Let's sing again. We've had uh, a number of things uh, go on in the past week 
It was so good uh, a week ago, to, so many of us uh, could join in our Easter service. Uh, in the week since then, some of you have engaged in Spring Harvest at home. You can still uh, look back and engage with this. Spring Harvest um, is a, a festival that happens each Easter time. Because they couldn't meet this year, they have put out some free content um, online. Uh, if you search for Spring Harvest online, if you go on YouTube and search for Spring Harvest, you can find a lot of talks there. There's uh, worship times, there's family uh, family times that you can, you can find different videos for. So do search that and engage in, in that if that's for you. Um, another thing that's been going on is every week uh, there is a, a Baptist Union time of prayer. They happen on Wednesday and Sunday nights. Again, if you go to the Baptist Union website, you'll be directed to the times of prayer there. Uh, we also carry on uh, helping whoever needs help, working with the different groups in the village, particularly the, the Helping Hands group. Between us, we're continuing um, to help a number of people. And this week, we were really pleased to um, actually get some support from the uh, Parish Council here in Barrow and Leicestershire County Council have both given us a bit of funding to uh, support the project we're doing and make sure that we're able to reach as many people as possible, everyone that needs help in this area. So we're really pleased about that. But now we're going to uh, go into a time of prayers. Um, and so Jane is going to lead us in our prayers. Let's pray the Jesus way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, you are the maker of heaven and earth. You are almighty, all powerful and sustain all things by your word. Yet because of Jesus' sacrifice, we can approach you as beloved children, knowing that you hear us when we pray. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray for our world turned upside down and locked down by the coronavirus. We commit those suffering to you, the sick, the grieving, those in financial distress, those struggling in isolation, alone or in difficult family situations. We pray for our government that they would have wisdom and a mandate to do that whatever is right. We pray for our health and social care workers, for their strength, protection and compassion. We ask that you would make us sensitive to the gentle whisper of your Holy Spirit as we seek to carry out your purposes both as a church and as individuals, in difficult times. Give us this day our daily bread. Thank you that we can trust you to supply all that we need each day for our food and protection, for our needs for social connection and fellowship, and for our spiritual needs for the bread of life to sustain and energise us. Help us, Lord Jesus, to use this time wisely, to walk more closely with you, so that we will emerge changed and empowered for whatever lies before us. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Help us to bear with one another and to forgive past hurts, to be released, to be released from chains that would bind us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We pray that you would renew our minds and protect us from negative thought patterns. We pray for those we know struggling with their mental health, Help us to support the vulnerable in whatever way we can. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 
we bring our prayers to you today. May you establish your kingdom in our midst and forevermore. Amen. upon the waters, the great unknown, where my feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I
Barra Baptist Church, we think it's so important not just to work within our own church and our own community, but work with projects uh, right across the world. And so we have some particular partner projects, some work closer to home, some further away. One of them is called Turkic Belt Ministries. And we're going to hear today from Elna, who's our link there, about what's going on in, in those churches, what's going on particularly at this time, and what we can learn from our time of church being different, um, remembering our brothers and sisters across the world. So we're going to hear now from an interview that I managed to have with Elna. Well, it's, uh, it's good to see you, Elna. Um, do you want to start off by saying a bit about uh, who you are and what you do? Hi, Ben. Um, thank you for inviting me to talk and um, being interviewed. Uh, it's a great pleasure to join you today. And um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ben Jabir. Uh, I'm a Baptist minister and um, I'm from Azerbaijan. Um, about six years ago, God, uh, well, God called me a long time ago to serve him by uh, supporting persecuted Christians and providing training and uh, conferences for persecuted Christians in Turkey built countries. Um, the countries like Turkey, Azerbaijan, Central Asia, Iran, uh, these, uh, these countries are the, uh, the countries, the majority Muslim countries, and there are Christians who are persecuted for their faith. Uh, so God called me to support these people and uh, six years ago officially we um, started, I founded the organization called Turkey Belt Ministries. Um, it's a registered um, UK charity and uh, we are now at the moment uh, providing uh, training conferences for persecuted Christians in Azerbaijan, Central Asia, Iran, Turkey. Um, this is what we are doing. Great. Um, so do you want to tell us a bit about what sort of issues these churches face normally um, in, in the midst of their situations? Um, the word persecution speaks um, a lot uh, about the situation. Um, I mean, the Christians um, in these countries, as I mentioned earlier, it, uh, these countries are majority Muslim countries and Christians are suffering um, uh, for their faith in Jesus in those countries because of persecution. Um, so uh, Christians are not tolerated uh, because of their faith. Um, they are not accepted, accepted in the society. They are not welcomed uh, in the families, uh, particularly because of the, um, the culture is different in that area. Um, um, majority people live in those countries. Uh, these countries are, uh, you know, the community uh, culture. Uh, I mean, the, the culture is, is a community culture in those countries. Uh, so therefore, whoever uh, become a Christian, uh, suddenly isolated and the families, you know, don't want to, you know, have any communication with the person, person considers to be a shame for the family. Uh, it's just because in Islam, um, Christianity is a lost uh, religion, lost faith. Um, so the, uh, Islam teaches that Christianity lost its originality. That's why God Allah and Muhammad. Uh, so everybody is in a Muslim countries, um, you know, they, they believe in that. So it comes from that mindset that whoever becomes Christians, uh, they think that we are lost people. We, we believe in nonsense and the Bible is lost. We believe in three gods and so on. So, so therefore, these Christians, uh, Christian brothers and sisters like you and I, they suffer for their faith. Um, they are persecuted for their faith. They don't have any freedom to gather together. They don't have any freedom to have any Bible, um, to worship together or have fellowship, um, to have, you know, to speak about Jesus freely, openly. And apart from that, uh, there's no opportunity for these people um, to study theology. There's no theological uh, universities or established institutions uh, in those areas for people to study. Um, and um, and also they don't have much freedom to have a Christian resource. They don't have uh, many Bible commentaries or Bibles available um, within the region for people. So, what is it that uh, Turkic Belt tries to do with these with these Christians in these countries? Uh, we uh, we're not only trying. We also we've already been doing this. Praise the Lord. Um, We've been supporting our brothers and sisters, particularly pastors, missionaries, 
uh, those who are in the ministry because they don't have um, nobody would offer them any job. Uh, if you become a Christian, you will be kicked out from your job immediately. And um, so we've uh, tried to financially raise uh, finances to support these people, to be able to help them to sustain in their ministries and look after their families. And at the same time, to do the ministry that God called them to do, to look after the people, uh, bring people to Christ. And... Um, uh, and also uh, provide the you know the uh, discipleship in their churches and so on. Um, apart from that, we provide uh, trainings, uh, training uh, for these people, uh, all sorts of training uh, and biblical training, um, pastoral training, um, I mean the missionary training. Uh, we provide um, different courses, biblical courses on discipleship, on evangelism, on marriage, uh, on different topics, um, the um, courses for these people. We usually travel. I travel with um, uh, those who are able to teach from the UK or from different parts of the world who has got the heart uh, for persecuted Christians. And uh, as we travel, we organize uh, week uh, training uh, for these people. We gather them together. We provide a teaching. Uh, we pray with them. Uh, we pretty much get involved in a pastoral care and, and a pray with them. And God is doing amazing things. We also do the conference of bringing Christians from the West and East together uh, to encourage the body of Christ and, um, and then pray for each other, to, to get to know each other, to build a bridge and, uh, and then support each other. I mean, the Bible you know, encourages us um to know that we are family we god's we are god's family so god's fam god's family should take care uh, of each other and uh, we have got a father who's not a selfish father and he wants to transform our hearts into his uh, heart in his likeness and he would like us to take care of each other and pray for each other to stay together to have a fellowship so this is what we are providing we also provide um, training materials. Uh, we provide, um, uh, you know, we write Christian materials for uh, our Christian brothers and sisters who don't have that. So we uh, freely, um, you know, uh, write uh, Christian materials, uh, teachings, and uh, translate them into those different languages. Provide them uh, for them. Great. Um, so obviously, at the moment, all across the world, things are looking a little different. Um, have you got any updates from the churches across the Turkic belt as to what's going on there at the moment in the midst of this uh, coronavirus crisis? I mean, um, we speak with our brothers and sisters every day. Uh, particularly now, we got uh, you know so so busy. Busier. Uh, we speak uh, with individuals uh, through WhatsApp and Zoom and Skype uh, with those who are able to connect with us. We provide um, the short encouragement trainings for individuals or maximum of two people coming together, maybe couples, uh, families, uh, because of the lock, uh, lockdown is, is very strict in those countries. For example, in Azerbaijan and in Turkey but, uh, now, um, you are not allowed to go out of the country, uh, out of your house. Uh, so in order to get out, you need to text uh, to a particular number that government has given to them. Uh, and then they will be giving you two hours, um, you know, uh, time to, to go out and then do your shopping or something and then come back straight away home. Otherwise, if you uh, if you caught um, on the street, you will be fined for £50 per person. And then if you caught twice, and you can be arrested. So it's very strict and then people are actually sitting in the houses and it's very difficult for them. And, and we're using this opportunity. Uh, to speak with them, to connect with them, um, and obviously, you know, every day we are busy, and uh, we are actually developing lots of online uh, teachings and, and prayer connections with with these people at the moment. Uh, one of the things that they are struggling, they are fire, uh, they are in fire for Jesus. They, um, they as I said, the culture is is a it's a cult, it's a community culture. People like to meet, talk, um, you know, go for for a tea tea. Uh, it's a tea culture um you know people like drinking teas and uh, speak and then you know share their hearts um, and obviously through those connections people uh, you know christians bring uh, muslims to christ and it's a bit difficult for them at the moment but what they've done uh, they've set up uh, so many facebook page pages um, and so many Insta instagram pages recording their videos putting up the questions uh, and of course they get lots of um, you know attacks abuses as well but at the same time there are people who are interested in God uh, 
And apart from that, lockdown is not a new thing for Christians, for persecuted Christians. Persecuted Christians, uh, this is a part of our, you know, as I was uh, one of them, one of them, and I consider myself as a persecuted Christians, Christian. Um, I mean, the lockdown um, is, is a part of your persecuted Christian life. Um, you know, Christians are uh, being doing, um, you know, their services, their meetings in a secrecy anyway. So this is this is not something new for them. Um, so they got used to this, and then they've been doing that for their lives. Um, so, so for for them, uh, there's there's nothing new in this uh, lockdown system. In fact, they are using different ways and then uh, different um, opportunities to make contact with uh, with others uh, online, and um, and obviously. Um, one of the difficulties that Christians are experiencing at this time uh, is that, as I said, um, not many Christians have got the regular jobs. Uh, and if you have a job, you will be kicked out uh, from your job as soon as you've, you've found that you're Christian. Uh, and as I experienced that in, in the past, I, as you know, I was a police officer and I was filmed when I was going to the church secretly and I was kicked out from my job. And this is a usual thing uh, in, in those countries. Uh, so therefore, most of the Christians, 90% of the Christians in those countries, um, they uh, they have a daily work. Either they are cleaners or looking after their children or doing uh, some, you know, daily work in the gardens or in the houses. Um, so it's not a regular job. And with this lockdown, it made their life uh, very difficult. Uh, they're, they're not able to earn any money. Uh, they're not able to look after their children and they're not able to pay the rent uh, in the flats that they leave. So at the moment, uh, the, the biggest need for these Christians is, is the finan financial help for them to be able to uh, pay the rent and then, uh, and then you know, buy the food. Apart from that, uh, persecution is part of their life. And, and they've been, um, as I said earlier, um, they've been experiencing this lockdown um, since they became a Christian. So this is not a new thing for, for them. Um, and, um, and I don't know if you've ever had any chance to meet with persecuted Christians. They always smile. They always rejoice. They're always happy. Um, knowing that um, they are persecuted for Jesus, a Jesus who died and and, and uh, he gave his life uh, for them, and, um, and 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 that brings a lot of joy to your heart that you have this opportunity, you have this privilege to be persecuted for Jesus who died for you, and um, and obviously God opens the doors uh, in those uh, circumstances. There are lots of miracles happening, so. Um, uh, we have got, um, you know, friends in Iran, uh, our brothers and sisters, and I, as you know, it's it's very um, dangerous um, to do the Christian activities in, in, within Iran, and the situation with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic is is very crucial, uh, critical in in Iran, and one of those um, the countries who suffered a lot, a lot of people dying. So Christians, what, what they've done, they uh, in the night, they go out two by two or three uh, on the streets and then they walk in on the streets and then they just lay in their hands on the houses of Muslims and are praying for them, um, you know, without letting the people to know that what they are doing there. So just they're laying their hands and then praying for the houses. And next morning they hear, you know, the news uh, spread uh, across the families and the neighbors that somebody had had a virus who disappeared and somebody was healed and somebody's, you know, miraculously well, was, you know, healed. And they're rejoicing. Um, and we had, um, I don't know uh, if you remember, our sister Perry, who's living in, in, in Turkey. She's from Iran, a leading in Iranian church. Her sister's daughter uh, had a virus in Iran. Um, and we were there at that time. Um, it was in at the end of February, beginning of March this this year. Um, so we baptized about four new Christians, and uh, we did amazing, you know, tra uh, training time over there. And she was uh, she was ill, and uh, we in Turkey prayed for her. And then after we returned back about a week later, we received this this news that uh, she was healed and she's absolutely fine. But, but at the time she had the virus, um, we prayed for her. She was about to die. But God has amazingly, you know, healed her. And then, you know, lots of stories of healings, lots of stories. Yeah, that's great. And it's, it's so great, good for us to remember 
what our brothers and sisters across the world are, are going through and, and remembering them in our prayers and and we'll we'll pray in a moment i just wondered as we think us in the british church um this may be the first time we're used to not not being able to gather each week together so i wonder if there's anything we can learn during this time um to re- help us remember those uh, across the world in different situations mm-hmm. I mean, uh, as I mentioned, um, lockdown is, is not a new thing for persecuted Christians. They used to uh, sing without noise. They used to gather in twos and threes in basements. They, uh, they used to this, uh, this kind of situation. Um, I mean, uh, you know, when, 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 you, when you are not familiar with this kind of situation, when you are not familiar with that kind of, you know, uh, sort of, uh, you know, worship, uh, you don't you don't really feel it and um, and actually it, it sounds a bit weird but sometimes uh, when I pray I, I say to the Lord thank you thank you for this challenge that you allowed uh, to happen um, in the churches the world um, in the first days when the pandemic came uh, to the UK um, I saw lots of uh, Christians were reciting uh, Psalm 91 and I must have ever actually knowing that, that psalm by heart um, and I was rejoicing that you know, Christians um, learn in the psalm, and uh, which is uh, one of the powerful uh, psalms and uh, God's promises. Um, what we can learn, we can learn to be grateful, grateful for the freedom, uh, freedom, and and also the opportunity that God has given to us in the UK um, for our faith. Um, we can freely, although a lockdown um, has put a distance between us in person, but uh, but still we can all uh, you know uh, do our services online we can still continue to pray and communicate and openly and freely speak about jesus as you mentioned earlier that you're going to put this interview on a facebook and it will be on the public page i'm not worried about this because i know nobody's in the uk will persecute me, persecute me for for this but um but in those countries you have to be careful we don't put online uh, you know videos and we don't we don't do that. Persecuted Christians don't do that. Um, but I just pray that my brothers and sisters in the UK um, take this opportunity to reflect uh, about the fact that um, the restriction uh, about meeting, restriction uh, that will go away, uh, we believe, and soon we'll go back to our churches and our big churches and worship together. It will be a joyful time. But this time, uh, I just pray that my brothers and sisters will reflect on this. And i be grateful for, for the freedom, for the unity that God has given to Christians in the UK. Freely worship the Lord, freely talk about Jesus, freely without any fear. Speak about Jesus and I worship him. Have, you know, Bibles and I go to the Christian shop and I buy those Christian resources. And secondly, use this opportunity. After the pandemic, I just pray that my brothers and sisters will be bold speaking about Jesus, will be, you know, um, uh, you know, more enthusiastic talking about their faith, um, more uh, open um, to talk about Jesus. Uh, I mean, every day we hear how many people are dying. I mean, 80, 9, 800, 900 people are dying. I'm just thinking, uh, have they had the opportunity to, to hear about Jesus? Okay, or we got, we're just given the opportunity for hell to be filled with uh, with these souls. I mean, um, these are the two two prayers that I pray for my brothers and sisters uh, in the UK. I, I met lots of incredible, wonderful people, and uh, you guys, uh, and I'm in my, my Barrow upon Saul Baptist Church family. You are pretty much um, you know close to my heart, to my family hearts. So every time we remember you, we we remember with gratefulness. And I just want to say thank you for all your support, for all your, all your love, all your messages and emails, all, all, all you, you provided for us and for standing with us, praying for persecuted brothers and sisters. Thank you so much to all of you. I love you so much. And I pass uh, love of my, my, my family's love to you as well, my son, daughter and, and my wife, wife. Please continue to pray for us as we de- develop more online uh, teachings for, for our persecuted brothers and sisters. Great, well, thanks. And it, it seems like a good moment there that perhaps we can pray for each other. So if I if I pray and then if, if you pray for us as well, let's let's Absolutely. just take. It. So, Lord, yeah, we just remember uh, all those across the world 
not just struggling with what's going on at the moment, but Lord, that have been struggling for a while. Lord, we thank you that they can rejoice in what they go through. Lord, we, we pray that as we look to a time for us when this will end and we'll gather again um, in public and, and un, unafraid, Lord, we pray that we would remember our brothers and sisters across the world who will not be stepping into that. Lord, may we uh, remember them in our prayers. May they be resourced. Uh, Lord, may they know you with them in the midst of all they're going through. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to share with my brother and with my brothers and sisters um, today um, and, um, and then have this opportunity to pray for, for each other. I pray for my Barra Afonso family and uh, for this um, um, church uh, that they faithfully follow you and gather together to worship you, Lord. I pray that this time will be a time of um, coming more closer to you, Lord. I pray for Barrow, uh, Barrow Church and my family that they will um, discover more of you uh, using this uh, lockdown opportunity to draw in themselves uh, more closer to you, Lord. And I pray for our brothers and sisters in Azerbaijan, in Central Asia, in Turkey, Iran, who are experiencing this difficulty, that they will continue to be bold about their faith. And I pray for your uh, blessing upon their lives, Lord. I speak to our hearts what we can do for them. How can we pray for them? And I'm more importantly, I pray that, Father, would you please help us to be grateful? And I use this freedom and, and this gift of freedom that you've given to us to be bold about our faith, to talk about uh, to talk with our friends and our families. So I pray for this, particularly in our family that we know that they are not Christians, don't know you, that Lord, this this time will be a time that you will touch their hearts uh, with your Holy Spirit. And I thank you again for this partnership in the ministry that you've given to our ministry with Barrow family uh, and that we we can serve each other we can serve you and your family thank you lord i pray for your abundant blessing upon my brother ben and his ministry and for for this church uh, through throughout this time amen amen well thank you very much for uh, joining us elna uh, it's been really good to speak to you Thank you. Thank you for having me. It, it's, it's actually great to uh, connect through online and then speak and, and share. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's good to see you too. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right. Bless you. It's encouraging to hear some of the things that are going on through that ministry um, that uh, we're able to support. And also that challenge to us of remembering that this time at the minute for us is so different, but it will come to an end. But there are people across the world who perhaps live in situations similar to what we see today, not able to meet together, certainly not openly, um, not able to do church as we might like to do it. So just that reminder to us in this time that actually this for us will pass, but for others it continues. And so we should continue to pray into that, pray for those people that do struggle much more, pray for those, uh, as Elna said, that at this time actually their work is, is non-existent and they're not receiving any support with that. And perhaps they've already come under some persecution in that. So we really need to hold uh, these people up in prayer. But we're going to uh, sing another song now. It's a song that speaks of, of what Jesus can do in all these different situations, that he makes the way. So let's sing again. You are here.
working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, because that is who you are. 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 You are, are. way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I hope today as you uh, were in your homes and, and joining in that you were aware of God's presence with you today. I'm going to finish today with a reminder of Jesus' words uh, before he went back to heaven. His words to each one of us as to what he wants us to do. He reminded us saying that all authority in heaven and earth was given to him and he tells us this, to go and make disciples of all nations, to baptise them in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, to teach them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Those words from Jesus there reminding us that we are to go out, to speak about him, unashamedly because we can, like we heard today, that some people around the world, that's difficult for them, not so for us. So we're to go. We're to share God's love with people and we're to know that God is with us in everything right to the very, very end. So thank you for joining us today. Please do join in our daily services coming up and we hope you can join with us again next week. <laughs>